Hello, hello, everyone. It is Wednesday. We're back again. I think it's Wednesday. Yeah, it's Wednesday. I'm thinking of next week, <clears throat> which we'll talk about then at the end. Next week, we have to change the dates a little bit. We're going to be here on a Monday instead of a Wednesday. Uh, but we'll remind you again at the end, there's going to be a little switch up next week. But we're here today at regular time, regular scheduled fun. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Caitlin. I am the editor and marketing manager here for We Crochet. And I get to come and chat with you guys and special guests every week and just talk all about crochet and things that are going on. And it's so fun. And I love getting to chat with you when you guys respond. So please put comments in the chat. I love seeing them. We'll answer questions along the way and everything else. I'm starting to see people come in. Hi, Angela. Hi, Dawn. Hi, Julia. Hi, Heather. It is so wonderful to see you guys all here today. Um, we love getting to share with you. Um, before we get started today, just a couple reminders. I know we've been talking about this, but it's a good time just to remind everybody of things that are going on. Um, Janice, I'm throwing this one at you. I totally forgot. This week, we have um, a promotion going on that when you spend $65, you can get a free 72-inch measuring tape. Um, so it's just a coupon code that you can use. It's over on our homepage. Um, or if you get our emails, it's already been there as well. We'll throw the link in to go to the homepage so you can see that information and the code. Um, but yeah, if you're shopping, you might as well. Um, I don't know what just happened. Can you guys see that on my screen? I don't know what happened. Anyway, that's okay. Um, but yeah, so go ahead and throw it. Uh, you don't need to put it in your cart. You just need to use the code. It'll automatically put it in your cart if you hit the threshold. That's how that kind of works. Um, if you're still shopping for some great gifts, we really love these new bags that we um, brought in. We collaborated with this really great illustrator called, her name's Julia Green, um, and she made this little alpaca friends bag here that we have, which is so cute. This is my favorite part, the little granny square sweater that is going on here. I love this. Um, this one is a drawstring bag. They are the eco bags, um, which really is a great company to support, so we wanted to do that. Um, it's screen printed on here, so you can grab one of those. These are exclusive to us, um, and also once they sell out we are not planning on bringing them back so and there's also this huge tote bag uh, which has the two alpaca on it right there uh, also super super cute um, this one we love so much so this would be like for a project like a blanket a sweater you can put other stuff in here as well it doesn't have to just be your yarn and whatnot and speaking of bags the last ones I want to mention are the collaboration we did with Elevation Yarn her little tag is right here. Elevation Yarn is a yarn company out of Denver, Colorado, um, but she also makes these awesome bags. So we teamed up with her. We got her own fabric made just for with the nice teal uh, canvas here on the bottom. And it's got this really cool strap that you can hold like a bag. Um, you can make it a little, pull it this way and it becomes a backpack. And so there's just some really great options here for this. There's also a tie on the top to hold things together, plus a little clip here if you want to put any kind of notions, keys, whatever, so you don't lose it. And then inside, it is just one color of fabric, but there are some of these slip pockets, so there's no zippers, but there's two larger pockets, one smaller pocket uh, that you could put like pencils or hooks or things like that in it. And there's two sizes. So this is the smaller size. And this is the larger size. And just to show how large this is, inside of here, I have my folio right in here. And I also have my snack bag that has the yarn that I'm working on, plus my project and everything. Um, my project's a little small right now. It's a blanket. So we'll see if this would continue to work. But I just wanted to show you that that does all fit in this bag so that you, that, like, that's how big this one is. I love this size, especially because it is nice and big. Again, you can carry it this way, um, like a regular tote bag. You can use it as a backpack by pulling and cinching this up and then putting your straps on. And again, there is a tie closure here at the top. Uh, so there's no zipper or anything else. You just kind of either knot it or tie it in a bow, whatever you want to do. And that's kind of how it holds it together. So the zip, 
or excuse me, the snap bags are really great for inside of here just to keep everything organized and all together. Plus your folio fits in there to keep your pattern, your yarn, um, yeah, not your yarn, your uh, hooks, your pencils, all of your notions secure as well. So we really love this size, but the smaller one is great too. You can still fit a ton of stuff in here. Um, just maybe not your whole folio and the snap bag, but you'll be able to get a small project in here. Okay. So I don't have an outside guest today. We have the wonderful Jen here today. She's in the office for us. And we're going to talk about our brand new collection that just launched um, a couple weeks ago. Well, I guess it's not, yeah, like two weeks ago, a week ago, a week ago, one week ago, we launched our brand new collection. It's finishing out our 2023 year. We're so excited to share it with you. We hope you're loving it. Um, we did change things up a little bit this time. It is only available as individual patterns um, or as an ebook. We did not do a print book for this collection. Um, it just didn't work out in timing wise. So we just said, let's get things out for people. Um, so we're going to put a link in here that you can see all of the patterns in the collection. You can go ahead and grab them if you want. Uh, you can grab the ebook or the individual patterns. And we're going to take some time to talk about all of them today and why we love this collection so much. So I'm going to bring Jen in. And while Jen is coming in, there she is. Um, as a reminder, uh, this collection was done by Brenda Anderson. So Brenda was the one who did our lovely uh, Granny Gloat collection. She's done a, a bunch of things uh, that we have worked with her on. And we are so grateful to get to work with her again on another collection uh, that she had this idea. And we were like, yes, let's do this. Let's bundle up for the winter time uh, because it's definitely that time of year. Um, Heather said, Bravo Worsted Yarn came yesterday. Yay. Um, are you doing the Mary Tweedmas crochet along with Brianna, Hannah, and Michelle that we talked about? I guess that was last week. Uh, or are you taking your Brava yarn for something else? I can't wait to hear what you're going to be working on. So yes, Angela, we love Brenda too. She is fabulous. We love her designs. And uh, yeah, we can't say enough good things about Brenda. We absolutely love her. Okay. So let's jump into the projects here. Jen, let's start with our set that we have. And so Brenda made this really great hat and mittens set that go together. And I'm going to bring Jen up here so we can get a little bit closer to seeing what's going on. And so this uses our, one of our brand new yarns, which is called Fluff of the Andes. So it's very similar to our Wool of the Andes, but it got a fluff up. Um, it is now a super bulky weight yarn that we have. Uh, let me get this right. It is 109 yards. Um, it's 100% Highland wool and it is a six weight yarn. So it is a super bulky yarn. Um, we love it. Okay. So Jen is showing you the hat and she's showing you the mittens. And the cool thing about these is they're using something called the maze stitch. And so <clears throat> it gives it this very nice tight look to it, but it is not tight to wear. Like it's still very flexible. You're going to be able to move in it. You're going to be able to do things as you're out and about. Um, a lot of times the thicker the yarn, the tighter the stitch, it gets really stiff and like uncomfortable. These are so great. So wonderful. Um, I love them. They're just so beautiful. Uh, also, Jen has a hat behind her that she's going to bring front for us. And this is Brenda's bring child here. So when we first started doing this collection with Brenda, we only had the bare fluff of the Andes available because that's what we got samples in to start with. And the colors were still coming. And she's like, that's okay. Just give me the bare color. She dyed this yarn. So she dyed it into different colors with our bare yarn to make this beautiful hat. And we're going to have some more information on how to do that going up very soon so that you could dye your own. Another thing she talks about uh, specifically with this yarn, because it is 100% wool, is about spit splicing. Um, that's the way I know it. You might know it as something else. But basically, you're felting the two ends of the wool together from one color to the next so you don't have the ends to weave in. It only works with wool yarn or yarns that can be felted uh, because that's the whole principle is that the fibers start to stick together and they become one piece of fiber instead of multiple strands. Uh, but she really went above and beyond with this beautiful hat pattern to show us the spit splicing, to show us how to dye things. Um, but we also made it in a solid color just to show 
You don't have to be that adventurous if you don't want to. It still looks absolutely gorgeous as a solid color. You'll see Brenda's also has a pom-pom on hers. We didn't do a pom-pom, so it's totally optional. And we really like to, so we did the light blue hat and then we did a dark blue or darker blue for the mittens um, so that they could really pair together without being exactly alike. Because sometimes you like to kind of coordinate, but maybe not matchy-matchy. And so you really have that options with our fluff of the Andes. So I love that so much. So those are those two. Jen, let's jump over. Okay, so sorry, I should have said those are called the snowball mittens. And the hat is called the bunny slope beanie. So we went with kind of like winter outdoor bundling up kind of theme here. Um, the next one we're going to share is the gondola cowl. And the gondola cow is done in our um, mill house yarn. And so let me bring Jen back up here. And so the cool thing about this is it looks like it's a square or excuse me. It looks like it's a rectangle. It looks like you just, you know, work it and seam it up. It's not. It's worked on the bias. Um, so you're making a parallelogram and then you're seaming it together, which makes it really cool and gives it that really great texture and look. I mean, honestly, it almost looks knit the way she did this. I mean, it just looks absolutely beautiful. Now, when we were working this, um, we were playing around with hook size and gauge just to kind of show things off. Um, and so we have a couple different sizes and all we did was change the hook size, um, which changed our gauge. And so you can kind of get something really loose and goosey around your neck. You could go down a hook size um, or work a tighter gauge and you can get something much more fitted to your neck. So there are some options with this cowl that you'll see in our photos. Uh, but we really love it because everybody kind of has a different preference on how they want their cowl to sit around their neck. And this one is really easy to do just by changing up your hook. Please note, though, that if you are going with a larger hook and you are going with a larger gauge, you may need to change your yardage amount depending on how much it changes. Uh, but how much your gauge changes from the pattern. But we do love that this pattern really gives you that flexibility to go ahead and change it up like that. So we have that one that Jen's holding. You can also see a green one behind her. So again, switch up the colors. They're all a solid color. I mean, I guess you could do this with multiple colors. I don't know exactly how that would um, work out, but I still think it would be beautiful. I love it. Um, and so there's totally different colors that you can do. So keeping with the scarf theme, uh, let's go over to, oh, did I say, yeah, that was the gondola cow. Now we're going to go over to the snowflake scarf. This one is done in our Alla Prima yarn. So if you remember, we did, oh, hold on. Love the multicolor shawl pattern in Crochet Studio 2. Um, Jessica, I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about. Maybe throw us a link in the comments. We can take a look at it and help you figure it out. I'm not really sure what Crochet Studio 2. Oh, oh, that's Jen. Okay, sorry. I totally get it now. Her sister. <laughs> guys it's not even monday i think that's what we're talking about now jessica okay yes that one so this <laughs> this one is called the snowflake scarf this one uses our olive prima yarn um and if you don't know it is a beautiful super bulky yarn that is hand dyed uh that we have had we brought it in in solids just recently this year so you do have a solid color option if you want now before you say anything, we know that this is going to be a little expensive. To get the length of the scarf, you do need to use quite a few skeins of Alla Prima. But look at how Jen is wearing it. She wraps it around a couple times her neck. Really? You could make this shorter, seam it together, and have a cowl instead of a scarf if you really wanted to. If you only have one or two, um, well, you'd probably at least need two to three skeins of Alla Prima. You could turn it into a cowl, an infinity cowl, something like that, and still have a gorgeous, gorgeous piece um, to go along with it. You could also change it out to, oops, I'm 
catch and stuff. You could also change it out to fluff of the Andes if you really wanted to. It's going to have a slightly different feel because the fiber content is a little bit different when it's spun up, but this would still be a really great option and it's slightly more affordable than the Ala Prima, but we love, love, love the hand painted colors of Ala Prima. And we knew that this was going to be a perfect pattern to go ahead and showcase it. Um, it's called the Snowflake. Let me bring Jen up here bigger. Um, it's called the Snowflake Scarf because look at that stitch in there. We thought that these really looked like snowflakes, especially in that blue one. And it's just so, so wonderful. We love it. Um, yes, Jessica, the pattern is on We Crochet. Um, it is called the Snowflake Scarf. I think um, right there. You can see it says patterns are part of the bundled up pattern collection. If you click that link, you'll be taken to all of the patterns. Uh, Jessica, I don't know about the book being available in print potentially next year, but it wouldn't be until sometime in the next year. Uh, for right now, we are only planning it for ebook and individual purchase. Um, oh no. Chrissy says, aloha. It's chilly here in Hawaii this morning. I could use these right now. Okay, we won't put you on the spot, but I'm sure Chile is like, what, 70, 60 maybe? <laughs> it's all relative, right? Um, yeah, so and Angela says the snowflake scarf is stunning. We love it. Check out that fringe there that Jen has showing. It is a twisted fringe. So you're kind of stretching it out. You're twisting it. You're folding it in half and you're reattaching it. It's a really great fringe uh, because these this yarn, a la prima, and the fluff of the Andes are kind of like an unplied yarn. If you try to use it as fringe, it is really going to fluff up. It's not going to keep its structure. So doing this twisted fringe really helps it keep a fringy look instead of just fluff. Um, but you could do it either way. Totally fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chrissy says it's cold because it's 65 in Hawaii. <laughs> oh my God. No, Chrissy, it's okay. You're allowed to say that that is cold. Again, it is all relative. I say it's cold here. Uh, I should bring myself back up. I say it's cold here when it's like 30 degrees and I'm like debating how I want to get my kids to school. And I have a friend who lives in Canada and she's like, um, until it's freezing, it's not cold out. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> So yes, it is always just relative to where you live. And I'm so happy that 65 is cold for you so that you can enjoy these wonderful patterns that we're talking about. So that's okay. You're still welcome. Uh, anyway, so the last, I think is the last pattern, right? Yeah. The last pattern we want to share is the cross country cardigan. Okay. This is the showstopper of the collection. It is absolutely amazing. So Jen has the version that Brenda, the designer made. I'm wearing our version. I'm just gonna stand up here so you can see the difference. So Brenda used our um, beehive color that goes from the yellow up into the cream. Mine is using the blue into the black color, which is the new um, set of colors that we brought in for the Wonder Fluff Ombre. So this is Wonder Fluff, sorry, I didn't say that. Um, and guess what? This is steeped, like mind blown, right? Leave it to Brenda to give us some wonderful steaking. But the reason you do it is because if you don't, you're going to get a weird pattern from your fronts and your backs and your sleeves when working this. So when you work it all together, the body of the sweater as one, it allows you to get that full gradient all the way up the body without adding in these, you know, other balls and things like that that are going to make it weird between the back panel that would be your full body wide and a front panel that would just be half your body. So you work it in the round, you cut it up the front, and then you add in your neck band ribbing, and then you add your sleeves. If you take a look at the one Jen has, it has the goldish yellow sweater, it has the pink collar, and then it has a slip stitch, uh, surface slip stitch on it that is in the blue color. You'll notice on this one here, we did the blue for both the color, or excuse me, for the collar and that line just to show the difference. Because while we absolutely love what Brenda did there, we do realize that that then requires an additional ball of Wonder Fluff. 
And if you don't have a project in mind to use the leftovers for, we didn't want people to feel like, oh my God, I have to get an extra ball just for this line. No, just go ahead and use the same color as your cuff. And then you don't need to purchase that third color or an extra ball of yarn. You can just use the two colors. So you have your ombre and then you have your solid color. But I mean, look at that pink pop off of that gold color. Like, come on. Brenda did it again with her buttons. They're snaps. They are not actually buttons. She did them as snaps so that they sit so nicely as a cardigan um, on there. They're absolutely gorgeous. It's just a really great way. Um, it is oversized. So really, you can just like throw it on over whatever you're wearing. You don't have to be unbuttoning it, unsnapping it every time. Just throw it over like a shirt. Um, yeah, Angela says, Wonder Fluff is my favorite. It is amazing. It is so soft. It is so light. It keeps you warm, but not overheated. Overheat, it's wonderful. Yes, Maria, the cardigan is so cozy and soft, and it is Wonder Fluff, and it's so great. Um, we will advise that because of the way that Wonder Fluff is constructed, while you're working it, you may have some fibers blowing around. So just be aware of that. It's not like there's a ton of fibers or anything else like that, but sometimes there are some extra fibers. So just be aware of it before you get started. Don't ask me for a substitute for this because in my mind, there is no substitute for Wonder Fluff. Just the softness of it, the warmth of it, everything else. Um, Janice throwing this one at you. The cold snap shawl that we did earlier this year. Um, Jen, was that winter morning? Yes. I think that was in winter morning. Yes. Um, it was two colors of Wonder Fluff that we put together. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. Also, just absolutely amazing. Anything in Wonder Fluff. I know Brianna Kempner just did um, uh, like a poncho in it. It's so great. It is so, so great. Um, Chrissy says, I don't know how people do it in cold places. I would be such a whiner. <laughs> I'm not complete or I'm not bragging. I just have a completely low tolerance. I get it. I say I can't go any further north. Like I am capped here. We cannot go north. We can only go south if we're moving anywhere because I can't handle any more cold. The only good thing about cold is that you get to wear your hand makes more often, but still I'm not quite sure that outweighs how cold it gets the further north you go. So we'll just say where we are. Hopefully, though, with this collection, you have found something new that you want to make and something that you're really interested in grabbing. Maybe you got some yarn during our big sale that we just had not too long ago, and now you're all set to go ahead and make one or all of these projects. Uh, Dawn says it's 28 degrees Fahrenheit here today. Okay, Dawn, that's cold. I know. No, thank you. But it would be a good day to wear your Wonder Fluff sweater if you went ahead and made one of those. Um, totally worth the cold for that. Uh, but so hopefully you guys can pick one of these projects that you really love. You can make them. The hats and mittens are going to work up really, really fast. So if you're still looking for a little handmade gift for somebody, those would be perfect. Um, it is a lot easier with hats and mittens uh, because it's less size important. Like you can either make a small or a large, depending on if it's a child or an adult or things like that. So it does give you some flexibility there on the size. Thank you, Chrissy. We really love the collection too. We think it's really beautiful. Um, we tried to go with something that had a really good showstopper piece. And then we brought in some other smaller accessories because we knew it's that time of year where you want to just make quick things. And we just need a little bit little accessories. Um, oh, Dawn is wearing her um, Michelle or MJ's off the hook granny square sweater. Is that from the one that they just did that the crochet along where it's like the coat jacket thing? That one is beautiful. Um, Angela said Kristen Omdahl did a beautiful cow pattern in Wonder Fluff. That's how I discovered it. I did not know about that pattern. I will have to go check that one out and see what else is done in Wonder Fluff because it is the wonderful wonder fluff, as we like to call it around here. So um, thanks. Jen, was there anything else you wanted to add in about the collection or something that I forgot to mention? I wanted to show one thing because, okay. um, because I'm the person that actually stitched these hats <laughs> and the mittens. Um, Brenda's designed this hat to be worn with this is the right side. I love the wrong side of this fabric. I think oh, the wrong side looks amazing. Yeah. 
And then let me show you Brenda's because hers was the hand dyed so that you can see how amazing this stitch yeah. pattern is on the wrong side. Yeah. Like for me, I would have worn that inside out, but we of course want to honor Brenda's design, but I just wanted to throw it out to people when they're stitching this. Yeah. Look at the wrong side of the fabric and just, you know, consider turning yeah. it inside out because how amazing is that in both the solid and yep. the color? It's I love just, to see that if you do a removable pom-pom, you could wear it both ways and still add your pom-pom on if you want the pom-pom, which would be really cool too. Absolutely. And um, in the photos, we did have a pom-pom on this one. Yes. Um, but we only added it for the photos. So now that I'm showing it today, no pom-pom. But <laughs> it doesn't need a pom-pom. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Margaret says that the hat looks so cute, like a rainbow. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. And again, that particular one was dyed by Brenda. And so if you're doing that, whether it's like Kool-Aid dyeing or you're going with like the jacquard dyes and everything, um, you can really pick the colors that you want to do, but you can also do it with the colors that we already have in the one or in, yeah, no, in the fluff of the Andes, not wonder fluff for that one in the fluff of the Andes. And you can just spit splice them together to get a really great rainbow pattern or a two color or whatever else you might want to do. So mm -hmm. yeah, we love that. And then the only other thing that I wanted to add on this one, sewing it together, because I, I made the larger version of this as well. It was, um, it's sort of a mind bender when you're trying to figure out how to line it up. It makes sense once you do it. I sort of love the smaller version because it's nice and cozy and it's more mm -hmm. of um, like a gainer. So it, it's more of something to keep you warm. Whereas right. to me, this one's more decorative. It's more of a fashion piece. Right. Um, and these were made with, um, this was made with the hook that's called for in the pattern. This was made with a larger hook, but Brenda made hers and it's the same size as our larger one. She made hers with the smaller hook. So this is one of the only times that I say on an accessory, check your gauge, check your hook, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if you want the drapier one, you may need to go up a hook size. If right. you want it to be cozy, who knows you may need to go down a hook size to get the cozy right. size yeah so definitely check it out and because it's an accessory if you start working and you're like oh this is not going to work out size wise it's a lot easier to rip out than maybe a full mm -hmm. sweater or things like that i mean it's always doable it's always possible but yeah. sometimes it is just a little bit trickier so yeah. yeah. And, and I never check gauge on an accessory because yeah. it's an accessory. <laughs> like right. the scarf is a little bigger. That's fine. But yep. you know, and um, on this one, uh, it would be easy to convert this and make it whiter mm -hmm. and shorter to make mm -hmm. it more of a wrap instead of a scarf. Yep. Oh, that was <laughs> the other thing. Sorry. There was one more thing. Um, fluff of the Andes. Yes. Working with it is amazing, super easy to work with, love it. Weaving in the ends was a bit of a challenge. Make okay. sure you twist the yarn so oh, that yeah. you give it some structure before you weave in the ends mm -hmm. or um, it it can be a little delicate. Yeah, I don't know if you can see, but like here, it's not applied, whoops, mm -mm. don't drop it here. It's not applied yarn, it's more like a roving yarn. Like, look at how easy I can pull that apart. So what Jen is saying is before you go to weave in your ends, kind of do this and see how different, like I got it to be that tighter versus what it is directly out of the ball. The tighter you get it, the easier it's going to be A, to get through your darning needle, but also to stitch into the other stitches without it splitting and fraying and just fluffing all over. I mean, that's why it's called Fluff of the Andes because it's just so fluffy. Yeah, yeah we love it. So. <laughs> and and weirdly, it's super easy to work with. I didn't have any problems crocheting with it. It was just when I went to weave in the right. end that I noticed, right. oh, I've got to I've got to get that nice and twist so that I've yeah. I've got a nice twist to it so that I can weave it in. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Now I'm done. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, thank you for joining us today, Jen, and helping to share the collection. We always love to get to share the new collection. Thank you to everybody who joined us today to check it out. Hopefully you loved it. Let us know what your new favorite pattern is that you want to make. Um, we're definitely on team Wonder Fluff, make your cardigans and all the accessories to go with it. But we are just uh, in love like with the fact that it's a steep sweater, that it has the Wonder Fluff ombre. There's just so many, so many things to love about it. Um, as a reminder, we will not be here next Wednesday. We're actually going to be here next Monday. So I think that's the 18th or something, whatever Monday is, we will work to get up the reminder um, by the end of this week or so, or first thing Monday morning so that you guys have that. But mark your calendars. We're going to be here Monday, not Wednesday next week. Um, it just worked out better with the guests that we are having on. Um, and so that's what we're going to do. And it's almost time for the holidays. So if you are still celebrating one of the winter holidays coming up, hopefully you are getting all of your projects done and ready to go. Um, Dawn said, thank you so, thank you. Thank you so fun. Love the cardigan. We love it too. Um, and Margaret says, the only time I say I like smaller hooks more than booger hooks. Yep, exactly. <laughs> um, thank you so much, everybody. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Hopefully you'll get some stitching done. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss whenever we go live, if we have to change the date or the time for whatever reason. And if you're watching the replay, go ahead and still put your comments in. We will be sure to answer as many of them as we can as they come through. So it was wonderful to be with you all today and we'll see you next week. Bye everyone.